Hello everybody, Levi Clay here and today I am going to begin a series where we start looking at how to work in Guitar Pro 7. Yes, Guitar Pro 7. So let's bring that bad boy up. Here's Guitar Pro 6 and I'm not saying goodbye to Guitar Pro 6 because I love Guitar Pro 6 but at this stage I think it's very important that I provide you guys with uh, how to uh, effectively operate Guitar Pro 7 and it's going to help you find some of the flaws in the program that we can hopefully keep reporting um, to Arabus Music um, and hopefully get them fixed. So I'm going to click on Guitar Pro 7 down here which I have saved to my toolbar and let me make me a bit smaller because you don't need to see my face and we can move the Patreon thing out of the way. Of course the best way to support this channel is checking me out on Patreon. Uh, anyway, so here is uh, what happens when we open Guitar Pro 7. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to walk you through the process of setting up a file and how to input notes in Guitar Pro 7. Uh, we'll be doing lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of Guitar Pro 7 content in the future, um, teaching you everything that you could ever want to know. Uh, but for now, nice and simple, we're just going to click New File. Now, uh, I should also point out that when we do that, let's just do that one more time. When we do that, I think the most important thing that you can learn, uh, if, you, if you're going to be using a program like this regularly, is hotkeys. So, new file is control N. So, obviously, if you think of that as control new and control O is control open, I'm going to hit control N uh, to create a new file. Now, here under the this is uh, essentially what's happened is it's opened up a new file and it's completely blank and it's asking us what instrument would you like to be your first instrument in this uh, on this piece of music on this score so we've got string instruments orchestral instruments um, drums and I can also deal with MIDI input which uh, uh, MIDI sounds which is another thing entirely nice to see that here under drums they've brought back notation editor uh, and tab editor sorry so tab for drums is back um, under orchestral stuff you know we can deal with this in future again being able to notate orchestral instruments with tab rather than just straight notation um, I know is preferred for some of you guys so anyway what we're going to be looking at is stringed instruments as you might expect and of course we've got acoustic guitars steel 12 string nylon and resonators uh, shall I bring the dogs in uh, dogs come here say hello you're all wet. You're all you're all wet, eh? Hey, uh, you are so ugly. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've got steel, twelve string nylon, and resonator under electric guitar, overdriven guitar, distorted guitar, clean guitar, jazz guitar, twelve guitar, twelve string guitar, sorry, and sitar under bass, acoustic, electric, fretless, synth, upright. Interesting that there's no synth guitar. And under other ukulele, banjo, and mandolin, which is cool. Um, so obviously we're going to work with guitar. I recommend always working with overdrive, never distortion. I always found that the distorted sounds in Guitar Pro 6 sounded dreadful. They That might have been fixed. We may see fixes to that now in Guitar Pro 7. Who knows? Um, and then as we go down, we've got further information about the guitar. So we can go in and change things like the color that it displays as in the score. Let's go with red. Um, and the, the instrument that it is played on so here I can see by the looks of things that this is going to be played with a strat um, this looks like a Les Paul it's a seven string uh, Telecaster there look so okay cool let's put a Telecaster overdriven guitar Telecaster and I want to be able to notate with tablature standard notation I don't want rhythm slashes I would like single stuff um, because that's how guitar is notated and then we've got the option for the for what stuff we want so again lots of information here I can go under guitar and I've got six strings seven strings or eight strings um, not too sure right now if we've got the option for a completely custom tuning uh, it might it will be in there somewhere uh, we'll take a look at that though you know if you did want something else though <laughs> ukulele violin uh, cello bass yeah, mandolin um, Banjo, 4, 5, and 6 string, which is nice. Even a shamisen, which is cool. A bass, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Uh, anyway, so we're going to go with guitar, 6 string, and let's go for standard tuning. Okay? How oh, nice. It even allows me to hear what that sounds like. Uh, and, of course, then there's the sounds. So, actually, cool. We can uh, we can take a look at these now, can't we? 
Uh, so these are our factory overdriven guitar sounds. Now this is for those of you out there that are really looking to um, create files that sound good before recording or sound acceptable. We're looking at this. But we could have a blues sound. Now I wonder if that is changed based on my guitar. Let's take a look. No, it doesn't sound like it. Maybe that's just uh, information. Uh, right, so, but let's let's do um, all, all sounds. That's no good. So we've got all these sounds that are worth checking out. You know, rock sound. Yep, yeah, sounds dreadful. Delay. And all these cool signature sounds that, you know, what I think you're going to do is if you go through all of these and, and take a listen to all of them, you're going to find one that you think sounds like a really good basic rock sound or blue sound, depending on what you're going to be using the program for the most. And then, well, you'll see. So if I check TNT, don't like that at all. Um, what else might, might work for me? Van Halen, ain't talking about love. So that's too too harsh on the ears, way too harsh. Uh, anything else? Anything jump out? Immigrant song, Zeppelin. I mean, they all sound pretty pants, if you ask me. Uh, what else might work? Clapton. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, oh no, can I not go back? Ah, oh, there we go. My default. I mean, I'm inclined to stick with the default sound at this stage. Uh, there's a lot of uh, notes, a lot of sounds that you could go through and check here. I'm just seeing if any might jump out as being suitable. A whole lot of love, I assume. Or could be a whole lot of rosy. Oh, no, we definitely don't want that. Let's just try one or two more. Uh, cashmere is definitely not going to get us where we want to be, is it? Sunshine... Uh, smoke smoke on the water perhaps no, let's just go with the default sound so overdrive and then here we can save that instrument setting um, and then that's that's by default going to come up as my instrument so red telecaster head overdriven guitar which is called od guitar notation settings tuning and that sound um, I've not really made much alterations to it but anyway let's hit create see what happens so we hit create and now we are in our our uh, window that we do our work within and now I can see what this OD guitar is actually for so if I double click down here in the bottom I'm just gonna uh, not quite how we'd want it from before uh, duh, duh, duh. Ooh, how do I bring up my track settings let's have a look track no. uh, hmm no obvious way to edit our tracks. Well, I'm sure we'll come back to that. The problem with Guitar Pro 7 is that I've been working professionally in Guitar Pro 6 now for many, 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 many years. And uh, there are things that I'm used to. And there are ways of doing things. And hotkeys, more importantly, I mentioned that earlier. And I can do that effectively. Uh, and in Guitar Pro 7, there's a bit of a learning curve required. Uh, so let's talk about the layout of the software, first of all. So when you open the software, you might find yourself in uh, this this page grid mode. Now, uh, in its current form, you can't tell that I'm in page grid mode. But actually, if I make a lot of music, you get this. So the music is displaying page left, page right, page left, page right, and that will just keep on going down. Now I, I work on a widescreen monitor, so that actually you know is doable for me. I can do that and it doesn't get in the way too much. But your other options are things like vertical page streaming, which is what you're probably used to from Guitar Pro 6. Um, this is definitely what I prefer, mainly because when I'm doing these streaming videos, uh, especially transcribing, I tend to have my transcription windows up here, uh, video there and then transcription file over here uh, so yeah vertical scrolling and of course we've got horizontal scrolling which you know may be for you it's not really my cup of tea uh, page parchment which is just one long stream of page 
if you wanted to print on old uh, printer paper from the 80s that would get you there um, screen full screen vertical now of course that's gonna that'll just keep going down I can't imagine working on <laughs> working in that we've got 187 bars there and we've barely had to scroll and screen horizontal which um, you know for for bigger scores this can actually be quite an effective way of doing things I know the guys at sheet happens publishing use this method for their tab books because then you can see oh, I don't know why I'm pointing at the screen <laughs> we might have guitar bass drums percussion assorted percussion maybe vocal on the top and you can see everything as it scrolls along so that's nice but I would prefer to be working in page vertical uh, and I'm gonna just get rid of all of these excess bars because I don't need them some hotkeys still work exactly like I would like them to can I do it up there no that's just gonna sit in my mind now that I've been unable to do that so a few other things that we have to get used to so we have these three buttons up here now what these control is as you can see on the left hand side of the screen we have our note panel now if I go back to Guitar Pro 6 just quickly it's a different system in Guitar Pro 6. In Guitar Pro 6, we had these buttons on the side. Note, Panel, Guitar Sound, Effects, Masters, Chord Grids, and Lyrics. In Guitar Pro 7, that's not how they've chosen to do things. On the, uh, I mean, we still have access to our lyrics, and we still have access to our chords in the left-hand panel, but that left-hand panel is uh, its own box because on the right hand panel, if I bring that up, that's where we have information on our track. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, hey, I can fix it. So if we were working on two guitars, um, and we, we might put Levi in there, and then that's that's going to tell me this is Levi's part and this is Doug's part when I'm doing Doug's part. Uh, so tracking information, and we can go in there and we can change the effects and things. I, I don't like this system. I have to be honest, I don't like this system at all. This is too... Um, RPG from the 80s when you compare it to Guitar Pro uh, 6 being able to put in any effect or amp you want and then adjust visually is a much much better way of doing things um, I should probably take those out they don't belong in that score <laughs> yeah so not crazy about that um, so that's our right hand panel and there's a lot of information that you can go through in here uh, and the panel at the bottom is your mixer, so we can get rid of that mixer if we don't want to have that mixing uh, information. In fact, in the grand scheme of things, aside from uh, navigating through many, many bars, it's probably not all that useful. So um, I will, I'll keep it up just because I'm used to it being there. Uh, then we have a few other buttons over here that are worth taking a look at. So button in the top right gives us a guitar neck. If you want to write things in by clicking on that, you can do that, of course. We also have a tuner. This is for plugging in and stuff like that. I've not dealt with that. Um, you know, line in stuff. I've not dealt with that at all. Um, and I won't really deal with that all that much. Maybe I'll, I'll run you through it, but for the most part, yeah. Now, for setting up a file, I think the most important thing that you need to do, um, evidently we're not going to get to note input in part one of this video. I'll do that straight after though. Uh, is getting used to F5. Oh, that's embarrassing. It's not F5 anymore. <laughs> uh, which would be file. Uh, I'm so used to going to this uh, uh, score information from. Maybe I can access it like this. Uh, we'll come back to to style sheet F7. Obviously, um, where is score information? Very professional, these videos here on my channel. Wow. <laughs> it's worth dealing with everything like preferences as, as well. I've had to deal with my audio uh, and MIDI settings. I had to device out as standard to be able to capture the sound that comes out of Guitar Pro, Guitar Pro in my screen capture software. Um, but if you don't need to do that, obviously using ASIO will be better for plugging your guitar in um, if that's something that you choose to do. Going through and dealing with things like your general information um, should have a... Uh, option for auto save and things like that which you're definitely gonna want to uh, deal with 
smooth scrolling things like that i'll bring the when i've written a, a bigger score i will demonstrate what those what those will do um you know things like seeing invalid bar lengths is is very important unreachable bar when playing uh, for example if you put in a, a dcl coder and then you never actually put the coder in the music uh it will indicate the parts of the music that will not will not be actually played Invalid tuplets. Don't you talk to me about tuplets. You have no idea. Uh, wow. Defaults for, uh, you know, I might go in and put transcriber Levi Clay because, you know, and uh, www.levyclay.com. Things like that. Just so when we open new files, that information is going to be saved. So F7 will bring up our style sheet. Now, style sheet is the most, well, Maybe not the most important thing, <laughs> but creating something that is suitable to you. I'm dealing in transcriptions where I'm sending people things that they can learn from, so I obviously want an A4 thing that they can print if they choose to. But you've got the option to deal in portrait or landscape, um, and dealing in global score size proportions. Uh, let's see if I can demonstrate that. I'm just going to bring that off screen for a second. Oh, that's not an option. Uh, let me write something in. Just write something very boring. Oh, Mr. Bar out. Uh, okay, so we've got some music there. Very boring music. Under glo global score size, um, I'll bring that over here. So if I were to increase this to 1.98 and then hit apply, you see everything gets bigger, uh, which is great if you're working with kids or someone with poor eyesight. You're teaching and you you know you want handouts um, and rhythm proportion if we bring that up uh, it will spread things out though because everything is of consistent rhythm here um, you won't notice that <laughs> so worth dealing with um, you know do you want to display the tuning where is that tuning uh, displayed what method of tuning do you want to be displayed just the strings that are non-standard just the name of the tuning, the name and which notes are done, um, chord diagrams, classic rock or jazz, and where they're seen at the top of the score or in the score. So some people like them to be displayed above the bars where they're being played. You can deal with that there. Systems and staves. Now in Guitar Pro 6, you used to have this indentation on the first bar. Looked terrible. Now it's default off, which is great, so you don't need to worry too much about that. Just going through each one of these and think and asking yourself, is this applicable to me? What am I using this software for? Do I want this feature? Header and footer. <clears throat> we'll deal with that for, well, you, you don't really engrave in Guitar Pro. <clears throat> but if you want to go through and deal with things like the fonts that you're using for numbers and text and things like that, this is how you go about creating uh, something that looks unique to you. And you can save this, uh, and keep this style saved. Under options, maybe? Yeah. So save style. Uh, when I'm working on books and things, the publishers that I work with have house styles. Um, so I do all of my music files, then I go under here and I load a house style um, and load one that's appropriate for the book that I'm working on and that will bring that up for me. Uh, and finally, notation information. So lots and lots and lots of information to deal with here. Hide in tablature. You want to read through each one of these and ask yourself, is this applicable to what I'm doing? A nice feature that they've included now, you can deal with your fingerings, right hand fingering and left hand fingering, but the most important thing is you can tell it where it goes, so we can have it in the tablature above or below. We can have left hand fingerings in the tablature if we choose to, um, position and staff, posi yeah, position and tablature. We've even got options for fingerings, so left hand fingerings and right hand fingerings, right hand fingerings, do we want P-I-M-A-C, which is your traditional uh, P-I-M-A-X, P-I-M-A-E, and T-I-M-A-O, which are not fingerings that I've dealt with personally, those last three. Um, I think it would be nice to have other options, though, perhaps even custom options there. Uh, for for I play a lot of you know Jerry Reed style, and, and uh, but also hybrid picking, Brent Mason. Um, well, Brent plays with a thumb pick. Let's say Brad Paisley. Uh, and being able to indicate which notes are played with hybrid picked fingers, I prefer pick, middle, ring, and uh, and pinky or, or little finger. So pick P, 
uh, or downstroke M and R would be ideal for me. Left hand fingering again, thumb one two three and four, and P one two three four, palm one one two three four. Um, so that's nice. Lots of things to look through though. I would advise that you go away and take a look through all of these because learning to use Guitar Pro is going to be about getting to know what all of these things are, what they do, and how they benefit you when making scores. So hopefully that was of use and interest to you. Check out my channel and do subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. There'll be lots and lots more videos like this coming, showing you how to use Guitar Pro. I'm going to do one now on no input, so I'll delete that and I'll be back in a second to do another one um, so you can learn how to input notes the way I do. I would also ask you to check me out on Patreon by clicking that button in the top left. You can also subscribe to the channel by hitting that button in the bottom left and on the right hand side you'll see two other videos that you can check out um, over there. <laughs> They're worth checking out and supporting this channel by telling your friends. Any comments, any questions, do drop them below and I will do my best to answer you. Peace out guys, it's been my pleasure to serve. I'll be back again soon. Bye!